great. I'm not even kidding you. Naj and the Empire versus C. Giantis. The first, uh, first time I ever heard a musical album was when my father played the record of Black Sabbath's Paranoid album for me. First time, yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. How do, how do you like that? I love it, man. Black Sabbath, that old heavy metal, Led Zeppelin. It's good stuff. I listen to it all day. So LeBlanc, Rumble, the first couple bands. And LeBlanc pretty much universally banned against Coco these days. We, we haven't really seen that be a threat from Tank. He prefers to sit back a little bit. Vagar will be taken out. We are still on patch 5.3, so yep. Vagar hasn't been nuked from orbit by <laughs> Riot's right. nerf death missiles. <laughs> Nuke it from orbit. Stay on the safe side. That's right. Best to be safe. Great way to handle Xenomorph and uppity champions. <laughs> And there's the Callista ban, as expected. That is way too dangerous to let into OQ's hands these days. He is yeah. the best Callista player that we really have. I should mention, too, we are on track to be uh, on to 5.4 when we get back after uh, the IEM break next week, too. So looking forward to that. And there is going to be the Cassiopeia ban against Coco. That's not something we've seen from him. So a yeah. bit of a change up right there. People must be starting to fear it in solo queue. So CJ looking over their last bands, we have quite a bit available. Yeah, well, we have uh, we have talked too about how Coco does need to kind of expand that champion pool, and you know teams are going to be looking for what he's been playing. There's the Zareth. Okay, good against band against Tank. Tank. Yeah. I wonder if they're going to go with the Karthus again. Tank played so well on it last time; it seemed so safe. It made a a big difference in some of the games. I think that that's probably more of a strategy when Peanut's playing, who does tend to, tend to have favor that te that gank heavy style. Uh -huh. Rek'Sai will be the first pick right here, hovering over okay. that Lissandra. We haven't seen a lot of Gnar in 5.3 so far, and we're not going to see it from Shy. Or are we? Shy, I swear or to God, we? if you play Gnar after he was nerfed, <laughs> I will come into the booth and slap you. I am, I'm really hoping he locks it in now. I want to see this. Come on. Shy. Don't. You refuse do to play Nar throughout the entire period he was strong. It's the mind Thank games. You. There we go. Okay, Maokai makes a lot more sense. All right. All right. I think keeping that Rex away from ambition is a good idea as well, too. Because Shy was on say, you know, we don't really think the Nar is that strong. And so if you think he's strong after the nerfs, I mean, I don't even know what to tell you. But. Yeah. Maokai, I think, is the better pickup these days. Also a takeaway from Duke. Again, uh, they have been using a lot of Maokai and Aurelia in the top side in order to help out Peanut with those kills. It's been a couple of weeks since we've seen Watch. Let's see if he follows the same pattern. But, you know, Watch Watch was born camping the top lane for Mach Noon, so. It's true. He has <laughs> He's a somewhat long of an expert. history. <laughs> he has a long history of helping out those side lanes. And although his last year, year and a half, haven't been too stellar, you know, I mean, hey, if Prey can make a comeback, anybody can. Right? Yeah, but <laughs> Watch never had that high point, though. Watch never had oh, that I high point. Oh, I don't know. I, I think the old... I, I know. The it's old okay. I know. I know. No, no. You're, you're, <laughs> the old Nodge and Sword days. You know, the old Mach Noon days. The old uh, Song days. I think I think Watch was pretty solid back then. He was okay. Yeah. Just like he is now. Just serviceable. It's like a Watch and Bengi are kind of... <laughs> <laughs> the two uh, mediocre jungle twins, really, <laughs> Korea here. So uh, we'll be a uh, Thresh Lucian. No surprise. They yep. really like the kill lanes these days. Uh, we've seen a lot of the Thresh, either from Kane or from Pure, in that bottom lane for Najin. And uh, also seen it taken away from them at times, too, just because it does create that kill pressure. And if you don't want to play Callista into the Corky, the Lucian, a great counter pick. We've seen that on the rise as well. Oh so. Boy. This will be some interesting stuff here. They are going to want to get some of those advantages early. I'm wondering what Duke is going to play. I, I think he may go for the Rumble here. Well, Rumble's banned, so I think it's oh, you're unlikely right. they'll be seeing that one. But what do you yeah. think about, you know, I mean, it's kind of crazy, but even with the nerfs, what do you think about Nar? Uh, I think Cassidyn would be good here, too. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a good I, I mean, we love Duke's Nar, so it's just that... Duke's the only person I would trust to play Nar after the nerf. Well, and Smeb. Let's let's be nice to Smeb too. Yeah, he's okay. been extremely right. good on that champion. Interesting that they're taking the the Annie right here. Uh, Mad Life has been focusing heavily on the Janna recently, and that does give them some additional hard engage. As for mid laners, we could see another Ezreal coming in for CJ right here. They would have. 
pretty strong front line for that double AD composition. Yep. And they've got a good mix of damage for it. So it wouldn't surprise me in the least. But now we may see Mundo. Interestingly, of course, Mundo mostly banned against CJ due to Shy's strength on the champion. But we could see a little bit of a reversal right here. Yeah. Picking Lissandra would be quite difficult against an Ezreal. You do stand to get poked and have a, a difficulty trading due to the lower range. Uh, this could uh, give CJ a pretty easy counter in the mid lane. Let's see what they decide to do. They, obviously, they, they anticipate that there's the possibility of this Ezreal appearing. Yeah. No. That champion we see a lot of the time from Duke. Huh. I, I don't know about that Yasuo. I'd love to see an Anivia. I don't think the Ice Bird is going to do it. Right now, just kind of playing with our brains here. Yeah, I like the composition that Najin has. They've got some good peel for the Lucian. Large amount of burst in CC, good amount of pick as well. They just have to be worried about this Mundo in the laning oh phase. Oh boy. Coco may be walking there in Kuro's is. footsteps, and it will be the victor. All right, well, Kuro has played some pretty excellent victor, but that's Kuro. So I also don't we'll see. We saw we saw the Tigers try and run the Victor Annie together, and it just in my mind doesn't provide enough peel for Victor. I really think that he's a lot better off with the Janna so that you can get that consistent damage down, especially if you already have a Maokai and Elisa and your your engage is fine. You have plenty of initiation. It, but with Najin's ability to get into the back with Rek'Sai and Lissandra, I would be a little bit worried about Coco just getting blown up. Does have the cleanse to deal with the Lissandra ult, uh, but not going to take away any of that damage, really. So, I don't know. I, I think this is a bit foolhardy. I would I would have taken the Janna if you wanted to last pick that Victor. Just pretty safe grab overall. I have a feeling that CJ picked the Annie just because they're afraid of the laning phase if they did get into a 2v2. Could be. Uh, that would be really difficult to deal with the Lucian Thresh considering you land one hook and there's just so much damage coming out of that lane. Easier to have Annie, who's a little bit tankier with the Molten Shield, as well as able to trade some hard CC back yeah. more easily. Well, a huge match in the middle of the pack here in Champions Korea. Let's get the game and see who takes it. Right, here we go. Welcome to Summoner's Rift. Najini Empire versus CJ Emtis. And I think it's going to be action packed, not just because both supports have Ignite. It's been like the trend lately. Yeah. People I, seem to be taking Ignite over Exhaust now with the support role. Uh, it just depends on what you're playing um, I mean, yeah. and the matchup that you want. I think with more aggressive supports like this, Ignite can be the better choice. Yeah, hey, I'm not complaining. So we'll see I how like this it. goes. Double uh, Ignite on Najin, but uh, Coco wisely going for that cleanse, I think. Yeah, definitely needed. Definitely uh, needed. In against Alessandra, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, Alessandra Duke, Duke starting Dorn's Shield this game, so pretty defensive start. Looks like both top laners really just wanting to farm this one out. But again, against that rather immobile Victor, he should be in a good uh, situation to zone out their back line. So I like this Mundo pickup a lot. Of course, Victor's uh, damage over time on his ultimate, Mundo's ultimate going to be very effective. And with only one Ignite, may force Coco into a Morello Namicon or something similar. It could be. Well, mid laners certainly don't seem to have any problem with building a fast Morello Namicon these days. Well, we haven't really seen too much of it from Victor, though. That's the thing, is we see a lot of the, usually the, Hextech core upgrade. Yeah, one or two upgrades early on. Uh, one or two of those early on. And then building into uh, Zonia's or Death Cap has been usually the route of choice. So it's going to make them think twice about that build, however, considering they're really reliant on And look at that. They're giving it up. So yeah. OQ and Kane take the big Krug right there, share the experience equally. And both 
duos getting to lane early. We've seen this from Najin before. Najin really likes to do this on blue side. Uh, they they want to power OQ and Kane through, and actually we saw it the last time Peanut played Rek'Sai as well. Due to the increase, the very good sustain from Rek'Sai, this is a viable strategy because she'll still be able to clear quickly afterwards without going home. She can take that damage and be fine. So I really like this from from Naja. They know their strengths, and here it is. Flash play onto space. He's gonna have to get away immediately with the flash summoning. He'll still be able. He's gonna use it, and the ignite not quite enough, but a great. Level two all in from Najin. They didn't get the kill, but they got both summoners out of space. And now they have to leave Mad Life alone in bot lane as space goes back early on, sub three minutes. Just a great strategy. Yeah. And really, CJ should have been ready for this. They did this exact same thing in their match, in their last match against KT. So, uh, but it's been really effective. And they, <laughs> they know how good OQ is in the laning phase. Oh, yeah. So. Well, Tank taking some pretty heavy poke from Coco, which certainly can happen against Victor, but overall I feel like he should be pretty okay in that lane. We'll see how he handles it. Yeah, watch not too slowed down either. No. By that start that they got. In the meantime, Space does lose a little bit of CS right there. Wasn't really able to get much, and look at that, a second Doran's Blade immediately for OQ. Now, Jin, wow. They really, really all in on this laning phase a lot of the time, and that's, um, I think it's going to be a difference having Watch instead of Peanut in that environment because Watch just isn't quite as mechanically gifted or places as much of an emphasis on ganking. Well, it's so. a big question, you know, what, what sort of difference can Watch make in this game? I think everybody's going to be watching him. No, no, I did not mean to make a pun there. Everyone's going to be watching him pretty closely here to see if he's able to sort of keep up the same pressure that Peanut did in his early games. So Doran's Blade advantage right now over to Najin, and they're easily able to zone space off the wave. Mad Life looking around in mid lane, not going to find much at the moment. Yep. And a lot of pings going down in the river right now. Hmm. See wards right there. Ambition and Mad Life on an invade, trying to get some deep wards into their own. They're really scared right now about how this bottom lane is going, and they're uh, coming around. Tank pops that E early on. Oh, he gets knocked out of it, though. First blood goes to Ambition. Great stun from Mad Life. Set that one up. Tank waiting a little bit too long to hit that E. Also, wow. just, this isn't the same kind of farming long-range champion that we've yeah. seen. And there oh, we go. Watch Mad catches Mad Life. Yep, watch flashes for that one, but it looks like Kane in range. Oh, nice, nice double stun. Hitting him with the incinerate death sentence doesn't quite reach, and Mad Life gets away clean. Good move right there from Mad Life, actually. Yeah, no kidding. Those are the types of plays where uh, it's like the old Mad Life right there for a moment. Maybe it's a Frostfire Annie skin. I think that's what's doing it. He's back on his old Frost. He's back. Oh, Duke in a bit of trouble now. There's the flash. Has to burn that summoner to escape the gank from Ambition. Things a bit scary for uh, Najin early on, despite that decent level two all in and bot. When CJ has seen the most success this season, and go back to their wins against SK Telecom and the first time they played, where they just shut down Faker by camping him, Ambition has been much more successful in his mid lane ganks, generally speaking, and that has been kind of the ingredient for success here for CJ. Yeah. And they're coming around again. Tank not playing one of those more safe jungle farmers this game. He does have to get a little bit closer this time around, and OQ still going hard. Yeah. A little bit more damage onto space. Mad Life prevented, uh, prevented some of it with the stun from his Q, or the passive stun, rather, delivered via the Q. I'm going to start playing more Annie. I haven't been playing enough of Annie lately. Is that your decision? Yeah. My official decision. Less what, more Annie? Less Janna, less Nami. Not what they're seen enough. You tired of being passive? I am. That CS difference at the bottom lane already 20. Yeah. Or OQ here. Uh, yeah, this is how Najin likes to play. So, see if Ambition can make a difference down here. If they can, turn the fortunes of the bottom lane around. Meantime, Duke doesn't have a flash, but he's getting tankier by the minute, going for the early cowl into Spirit Vistage more than likely. And still has that teleport available as well, too, so he can make plays elsewhere on the map. Yeah. If they need him to. Or just die, and, you know. Or just die. <laughs> come back instantly. <laughs> lots of uh, lots of early awards from CJ right here. Trying to get that control over the mid lane. You'll notice they have they had four wards on around the mid lane, two on each side. 
just so they could find more angles on the tank. And it's a good idea so far. I've been able to make use of it for the first blood, and put, keeping the rookie down is a pretty valuable tactic. Yeah, it is, it is something that a lot of teams have been trying, and Tank's first time kind of off of one of those passive mid laners. It's, we'll see how he can kind of handle it. Uh-oh, in trouble again, get kids back. That's going to be another kill. Oh, somehow Tank makes it out of there. Yeah, unfortunately, wow. the, Vic the Victor W didn't get down soon enough. Yeah. Uh, Tank able to teleport back to his E, threw it out in time, and they couldn't huh. CC him for the entire duration. So he will make it out, and that's two ults wasted alongside of a flash from Ambition. I'm impressed. I didn't think he'd be able to make it out of that one, but... Yeah, he also went for the Negatron the Cloak first, so... Oh, yeah. It's going to be reducing a lot of the damage coming in from Ambition and Coco, and so just goes right back to farming. No. No harm there. So OQ still with that massive gold lead in terms of his farm. And Space and Mad Life not really able to do much. And they sacrificed a lot of farm for Space too with that mid gank. That was a choice that CJ and Mad Life made. Uh, as we noticed during that period, OQ and Kane were zoning him off the wave. A lot more damage on the Space to play as well. It could be in trouble. Ignite used again. Will it be enough? Doesn't look like it will. Looks like a one or two ticks short of finishing off Corky there. He did use a summoner heal to survive that. And so, in the end though, just one summoner for one summoner, and back to CJ's decision, they, they basically made a decision to give up this bottom lane. That is the choice that they made by sending out Mad Life. Space fell further behind in CS without a support there. When the wave wasn't on his turret, he was easily zoned. And they have a level disadvantage as well, but Victor is ahead by a little bit. Unfortunately, Coco couldn't get that first blood. So now the carry pressure really on Victor in this game because that's where CJ has decided to put their resources. Yeah. I mean, a nice thing for CJ is that they will have that very tanky Maokai coming in later in the game too that can just kind of like give your teammates that are doing a little bit less damage than usual time to do that damage. Yeah, I'm really worried about Coco in this game, Doa. He's going to, they really are, are going to have to figure out whether they're going to buy a Crucible and up. Yeah, flash play. There's the box. Gets out of it, though. Space forced to use his flash. Just unrelenting aggression from this Najin lane. That's what you have to do. It's really fun to watch them play. So there, here's why I think Janna would have been better. One of many reasons. I think that this Annie pickup, you really want to go Talisman into... Um, into Righteous Glory on her. Yeah. And that's, you're not going to get a Crucible also unless it's a ridiculously long game, right? So that's gonna remove one of the opportunities to cleanse right there. And even though Victor has cleanse in this game, there's still so much focus that will be on him. And his relative lack of mobility against Mundo means that Duke is going to be a real problem in the late game if Duke can uh, get some items here and get some levels. So I don't really know what he's going to do. Probably just going to have to build Zonias in order to deal with that, but that will lower his damage output. Meanwhile, if you had a Janna here, you'd have the Monsoon. You'd be able to build Crucible in order to help Coco out. So I, I just, can, I'm just really not the biggest fan of Annie and Victor together. I really think Victor's a champion that if you want to oh maximize boy. his damage. Here we go. Watch is going to come in with the there burrow. There's a grab onto Space. Gets brought in with the Death Sentence. There's a play. Space gets out, though, with the Valkyrie. Watch is going to come in and try to pick up the kill, but he can't quite do it. There's one for Ambition, who got there just in time. Meanwhile, Teleport coming in for Shy. OQ trying to put out as much as he can. Duke is there as well, too. Can Najin maybe turn this one and get a kill out of it? I don't think so. Duke pops that ultimate. Looks like he's in trouble. OQ needs to keep moving, man. They could dive that so easy. Duke barely lives through it, it looks like. The Storm's still chasing him. Duke, the Storm's still on you, man. He's just going to power through it with his ult, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> All right, he's fine. But Najin not so fine as they give up two more to CJ. Yeah, watch going in deep and right the there. They didn't know where Ambition was, and they decided to make that play anyway. Also, Tank not following, so it ended up being Effectively a 5v2. Space survives with just a sliver of health, otherwise they Can't may have been able that. to turn it around the other way, but CJ will get a dragon for their trouble. Coco. Ooh, I don't know about what? this tank. Tank, no. Yeah, you gotta get out of there, man. Well, Kane right there misses a death sentence somehow. He really that threaded the needle with that one. <laughs> really a bad death sentence. Maybe they could have followed up. Tank a yeah. little bit over eager there with his ultimate, however, now he's gonna find it down. And Coco 
able to farm. You can see because he doesn't have that Abyssal yet, this Lissandra really not doing too much damage. Right. Oh, and here comes Mad Life, stun loaded up. Tank's gonna get hit by it. Coco doing some damage. They're just yeah. gonna push him out of lane. No real big kill pressure there. Kane yeah, walking in, misses that death sentence. Coco, no mana, no ult, so yeah. Tank doesn't have to flash right there. Not really a concern. He will have some time to head back to base. So what looked like a nice setup was just easily turned on its head by CJ, and you have to respect Ambition's positioning. After that fight, Kane was able to get a series of deep wards in, so they will continue to try and push their advantage right here. Obviously, the gold difference, massive between OQ and Space right now. A Phage to now a pickaxe and a BF sword, as you can see that double CS potency coming in from OQ. So it so really is going to be a game about uh, Coco and OQ here. Who can carry harder? Who can their team protect a little bit better? Yep. Very true. Looks like Coco has gotten his first upgrade on the hex core. Mm -hmm. I would imagine that would be for Death Ray, like we've seen it from all the victors so far. 800 gold already. Wow. The advantage, so pretty, pretty huge. Pretty huge for 13 minutes into the game. Well, especially considering Space has two assists as well. Oku hasn't been able to get those kills. Yeah. Fortunately for CJ, it's been really close on a couple of occasions, but Space and Mad Life have managed to stay alive. So 300 gold lead in the end for CJ alongside that one dragon, obviously not going to be giving them too much in terms of gold value for their stats at this early point in the game. Yeah, CJ certainly looking pretty strong so far. Yeah, Tank having a bit more trouble getting focused in camp this time around. Yeah. Well, he's kept up on CS at least. He does have that Abyssal Scepter now, so he's got an opportunity to start to turn things around a little bit. Looks like they'll be able to successfully hand him the blue buff. And we'll see what happens when that second dragon rolls around. I think that's going to be a very telling engagement to see, you know, who's really got the lead here. Well, CJ, I think they're going to have that easier time in the early and mid game. But late, I really believe that Najin should have some pretty definitive edges. Oh, well, Najin certainly doesn't have a problem with playing long yeah. games, do they? No, they don't. Should be fine. That it nearly gone. Yeah, it's been pushed up this entire game so far, so has taken quite a bit of damage from the minions and continues to do so. Grinding it down, attack by attack, and Najin continues to play a little bit back in the, uh, in the mid lane. He's starting to push his advantage, though, now that he does have the finished Spirit Visage. Yep. Shy with the Righteous Glory for his first item. Duke, uh oh, pops that ultimate. Will they get there in time? He doesn't have a flash right now. Shy coming around to the other side. Duke is in a lot of trouble here. He's got a lot of health, but I don't know if he's going to be able to last with this one. In fact, I definitely doubt it. There goes the Ignite. Duke getting kicked back towards the turret. Don't know if Ambition really Ambition needed needs to, to there. stop taking yeah. these kills. That was really unnecessary from him and has. Yeah, I just mean, didn't need ult too. Yep. Huh. So, uh, I think he's still a mid laner. <laughs> it would definitely be great to get shy even more ahead. Or anybody? Or anybody? Bad Life's roams this game have been really good, though. We haven't been talking about that too much, but yeah. his Andy's been on point. And notice that we have a uh, we have that righteous glory already, as you were mentioning on to Shy, so just really heavy engage from CJ. They'll be able to get a bunch of picks. I think this also frees up Mad Life to go into uh, the into the Mikhail's Crucible right after the Talisman too. That's or true. Even, even before the Talisman. But. He could he could make that decision, that's for sure. He yeah. will first pick up the Distortion Enchantment, so crucial on Annie with the cooldown reduction. Yeah, you need that. Flash Tibbers up as much as you possibly can get it. I think right now you do just go Talisman and then, then look into that Mikhail's later on. But even that is is a lot to buy throughout a game with a support like this. But with a good start at four assists, he could pull it off probably. Yeah, Mad Life, 100% kill contribution rate so far, having a fantastic game on this Annie. Yeah. There's a Rek'Sai ultimate coming in. Void Rush right into uh, 
end of the bottom side jungle for Najid, but just going to be farming right there. Well, dragging up in about 30 seconds now, so teams are going to be getting set up for that really good vision actually by uh, Najin around the Dragon Pit. Got people hanging out there. Looks like they really want to take this one and even it up. They could use it. They definitely could. They've got the crab on their side already, so they will have some vision that can't be cleared. Right. Now, Oku already has his Infinity Edge, too, whereas uh, Space, he doesn't have time to go back and spend his money right now before whatever happens to Dragon happens. Wow, his power spike is so late this game. It's ridiculous. Yeah. So think, late. You think CJ just needs to give this one up? Uh, I think it just depends on the positioning. If they're lucky, they can bait out the Lissandra ult onto a less important target. Uh, we'll see. Ignite not up for Mad Life as well, too. Kind of another thing that might make this a little bit more difficult if Duke decides to come down. Yeah, that Mundo really does need more time to scale. Maokai is going to be a lot more powerful at this phase in the game. But without that Ignite, that may not be true, however. Looks like CJ yeah. is going to be able to delay it long enough for the Ignite to come off cooldown. Seems that way, Najin pushing people out of that mid lane, goes for the death sentence onto Mad Life, and he's still very fragile. If you can get a pick, you can really turn around games like that. Shy just trying to chunk Duke out. They actually got the ult out of Duke which is pretty big. Yeah, it's very big, actually, considering he still isn't at full HP. Kane, yep. we're going to tap Mad Life there just for a second, but not choosing to follow up on it wisely. Like Shy will be recalling, and so will Duke. Both top laners. Oh, nope. Hmm. Duke going to keep pushing. I think they're going to give this up for that turret. Duke yeah. definitely wants to get some damage. They already have the bottom tier one in their favor to give them that gold lead, but it's been a pretty high pressure game so far from Naja, and they have that turret HP advantage at the moment. Well, CJ starts the dragon, and then they back off, just still a little bit too nervous to uh, go for that. Red buff taken by OQ, and there we go. Okay, now Trinity Forest is done for Finally. space. And that'll help quite a bit. Still no boots, though, so he is a bit vulnerable. CJ, though, with that Trinity Force, should be able just to poke out yeah. Najin. Most likely. This is giving Duke, well, he's already gotten time to get his ult back now. So we're sort of back to square one. Najin might just give this one up, everyone. I guess so. Starting to recall, they don't really want to fight yet. Can't well, say that I blame them with all the engage. Well, CJ's going mid, CJ. too, so it's like they're both kind of trying to give it up, I guess. I don't know. Nobody wants the dragon. He's so unloved. I think really he's happy I mean. if people express their love by shooting him in the face with pistols. True. It's not usually a good expression of love. <laughs> then again, you can't you can't really keep a dragon in the house. The carpet will be ruined. Just singed along the sides. Yep, that's right. Well, you don't want to let singe in your house either actually. It depends on how many pests you have. If the you have a rat, if you if you have a rat problem, you may in fact want to let singed into your house. That is true. He clears out those cockroaches Fumigate in a jiffy. Place. I can see it. I think him and Zach like run a service where Zach just like inflates and covers the house and then Singe fumigates <laughs> it. There's a lot of money making potential in that, I feel like. Yep. They could call it uh, something like top pest control. Because they're the top and then they're also top laners. You get it? Here we go. Dragon started now by Najin. CJ, will they contest this one? Dragon getting very low. I don't think they can. Can Ambition steal it? Comes in, gives it a try. Can't quite do it, though. They're going to get the knockup, but he gets out. Oh, a huge kill on the Mad Life right off the bat. And Shy comes back in, taking a lot of damage with OQ immediately. Duke, there we go. Ultimate going through for Mundo now, and Najin pushing back CJ. They don't need to chase this that far, but it looks like they're going to anyway. Watch over the wall. Nice double knockup. They're going to grab Shy with the death sentence, but that may have been a mistake. Space coming in. CJ getting two kills, a double coming in for OQ, and this is the OQ show now. Coco, force on the fight. OQ wants to come in, but the death ray is going to force him away. That ended up being a lot more bloody than I think it needed to be, but Najin still came up one kill ahead in the end. Yeah, and by getting Mad Life initially, that's why Najin continued that fight right there. Yeah. This should be, by all means, a power spike for CJ going into that fight, but uh, Mad Life didn't get his timbers off. He just gets hooked and then ulted straight into his doom. Shy, unfortunately, finds himself in the pit. OQ, not the best calling his ambition, and watch, scrap it out on the outside. Then the pursuit comes in. Kane 
is going to be able to land a hook right here onto Shy after flashing right next to the Victor trap. Unfortunately, he does pull himself in right there. Not sure he needed to go in. Yeah. And Oku comes over the wall, looks for the kill onto Coco, but just barely can't get it. Orb right over the wall, but he has to let Victor run right there. So it was a good read, I think, from Najin. Uh, they they got Mad Life out of position. Mad Life wanted to get in so they could initiate a fight. Caught him immediately in a hook, transitioned beautifully into the Frozen Tomb, and that allowed the cleanup. So Najin right there, taking a fight in the enemy's power spike, and it actually worked out for them. So they'll yeah. be feeling good at this point. Well, that means that uh, OQ is well on his way to that Yomu's now, too. And when we see that Lucian get the uh, Yomu's Ghost Blade after the Infinity Edge, you can start popping it before you use the culling. That's when Lucian starts to get just a lot of damage, of course, but then a lot of utility around the map, you know? Yeah, it's it's going to be quite dangerous. And again, this Mundo in the late game with only one Ignite is going to be very problematic. CJ not hinting that they're going to be building a Morello Namicon anytime in the near future. I guess so. And with Space so far behind, now Space's power spike was pretty seriously delayed right here. He didn't get a Trinity Force until 19 minutes, so about three or four minutes later than he would have liked. And now Corky really just going to be playing second fiddle to this Lucian. He's never truly going to get a good power spike in this game. That 70 CS differential halting his, his growth, his progress. So Najin really should be feeling quite good right now. Yeah. We'll see if they can kind of keep the momentum going. Najin, you know, it is about this time of the game where sometimes you've seen some suspicious plays, we'll put it that way. But I think this one's close enough that we're not going to see the, the cockiness that uh, OQ sometimes uh, shows. Well, CJ, yeah, and CJ's st definitely still in this. If, oh, yeah. if OQ does get cocky, like you're saying, they have so much hard CC that he's really going to be in trouble. Definitely. CJ has to start thinking about how they're going to use it. Yep. In the meantime, I wonder uh, how Najin's going to be able to do as far as pushing these mid and top turrets go. It looks like they'll probably focus on mid, first of all. Maybe Duke can get the one in top himself over a longer time. We'll see. That's kind of the, the plan, I suppose, right now, is get rid of the outer turrets. Yeah, Najin, there's no real, it's no real necessity for getting rid of the outer, outer turrets right now because the longer they farm, and the longer this game goes, really the more powerful Najin is going to be. They are the late game team. So, yeah, it's just the composition right here. Mundo and Lucian versus Maokai and Corky, of course. Maokai very powerful late, but Mundo really does get unkillable, especially since CJ is very burst reliant in terms of their damage. And Corky does have issues compared to Lucian in terms of outputting sustained damage over the course of the team fight. Lucian's passive really helping him out yeah. in that regard. And I think just that, that relative vulnerability of Victor in this particular composition. Victor's the champion who actually does have the advantage right now. Corky has been stunted. So here we go. Looks like they're trying to push it down. Was that a height joke? It was. That's really mean to Corky. <laughs> It's okay, he is an airplane. He doesn't need to be tall. It doesn't seem to make him any higher than like average people, though. No, it doesn't. It's one of the great flaws in his designs, Doa. One of many. One of many. He's That's really true. a terrible inventor. The Yordle Air Force is awful. He's kind of retired, though. Apparently, he used to be like a famous famous dogfighter on the, uh, I think it was like called the, the like Screaming Yip Snakes or something. There's actually a name in the lore for Corky's Sort of a uh, wing, I guess you could say. I don't know. What the hell is a yip snake? So I don't know, man. Ask, ask uh, Ryan. It's <laughs> apparently a creature that exists in the League of Legends. So there you go. Watch out for yip snakes. <laughs> I like how Ryan just makes up words without any context or imagery. I just kind of picture a snake that like sort of barks, kind of. It's I like, don't know. We need to think up <laughs> some sort of fearsome animal to name our combat wing after. How about a barking snake? <laughs> okay, yeah, it the sounds terror. great. Great, I love it. The terror. I'd be pretty scared if there was a snake bark barking at me, man. Would you? That'd be freaky, wouldn't More it? More or less scared than a rattlesnake. What if it was a rattlesnake that barked? I mean, these things would be poisonous. Or huge. I actually wouldn't be too scared of that because at least I would know where it was and therefore be less likely to get bitten. 
Yeah, but it's the silent snakes you have to worry about. <laughs> that is true. That's true. The silent snake is the deadliest. <laughs> Kane gets caught a little bit here. A lot of damage onto him. They're going to go in deep. There is the twisted advance. Shy way out of position now in the team fight. Meanwhile, Dajit gets into the back lines. Duke all over space. Coco right now. There out of the fight. Can Tank do anything in the back lines? Mad Life goes down. A kill for Tank. Can Shy equalize though? Meanwhile, space manages to pick off Watch. There's the zone use for Tank. Will he live much longer? No, kill for Ambition. And it looks like CJ may have this fight. Tank's still up somehow. And OQ, how in the world did he get that far back? It's going to be another kill. Double for Ambition. Duke, the only one left on Najin, and he is going to have to get out of there. That's going to be another dragon for CJ. Yeah, a bit of a sloppy engage there from Najin. Very. Means that fight doesn't really go their way. Kane gets caught out. and. With Mad Life able to answer with that engage, we really see how much that hard CC is able to do. Now, that time, Duke did get on top of Coco in space and was tying up Ambition as well, but there just wasn't enough he could do. Shy doing the same thing to the enemy's back line. And uh, Tank's engage, he used his ult on himself right there, which I don't think was ideal. Kane walking into the river, a bit dangerous positioning. Tank goes in and ults, but OQ just not able to do anything during this fight. Zoned out by the tanks, there's just not enough damage on Duke yet. Coco does a great job of staying alive with the help of Ambition and his W, but they just can't kill Shy in time. And Ambition with the flash to help Shy out and clean up this fight. That was actually a very good flash right there in order to make it work, and that's OQ going down. So Kane getting caught out in that choke meant that OQ really couldn't follow up onto anything early in that fight. Meanwhile, Space outputting a lot more damage on the backside. So with that, it's another dragon over in favor of CJ. Two to one right now. Najin still with the gold lead and I think still with the scaling advantage, especially as items start to come in that can deal with some of these Annie stuns. We can see a, a Crucible or some, uh, some Zonias or uh, also, some some QSS starting yeah. to come down. Space only about a thousand gold down to down to Oki right now, so he is catching up pretty fast. Three zero four. It's interesting that both fights have kind of been decided by the uh, support getting caught. Yeah. First Mad Life, then Kane. Get together, guys. Come on. It was also just Najin's positioning right there. They were so spread out in that engagement. Oki was really not able to do much damage at the beginning of that fight. Wasted the calling a little bit, didn't really hit anybody, and also blew his Ghost Blade really early. So when you don't have that active to plow through Maokai, or at least get a good calling off, you're really going to be hurting because that's a lot of gold invested in that item, and you, you need to be able to use that active appropriately. But using it early and then missing your calling means eh, things aren't going to be going so great for your team afterwards. Yep, very true. Another red buff for OQ. CJ way ahead in the kills, but still down in gold overall. They haven't been able to take any turrets yet this game. And they haven't had that pressure edge. Najin has been very good about keeping a lot of HP on their turrets by the 30 minute mark. Only one close is mid lane right now, a little below half. Everything else pretty high HP. That said, we're getting to that point in the game where CJ can easily start taking these turrets down, and that's going to swing the gold dramatically and eventually into the favor of CJ. Yeah, as long as Shai can keep doing work on the back end. But Najin could have definitely had a better team fight last time. Tank didn't have to hold himself. Kane had gotten caught out. So we'll see where this goes. And Tank does have the death cap now on top of that Zonia's Hourglass. Wow. Meanwhile, Victor still pretty far out from that Zonia's, and it's going to be really helpful for him to have it once he gets it. Yeah, I mean, Victor sells a lot of damage. He's got his Hex Core upgraded all the way. That's a ton of AP, but having that Zonia's will just be really kind of freeing as far as uh, where he can be in deep fights. Madlife actually going for the Righteous Glory first. I, oh, I, really? I can't blame him, actually, just because in this situation when he is maybe going to eat a hook on the front line because he has to stand in front. That's one of the things about Annie is that you don't have a lot of choice sometimes in terms of taking skill shots because you have to make a beeline at your opponents simply in order to engage. So a little bit of extra tankiness with that Righteous Glory may be helpful for Mad Life here. Yeah. 
I agree. I mean, the talisman doesn't give you a, a ton of stats. Right, exactly. So in this particular situation, especially as well, because when you're a little bit ahead as far as the team fights go in the game, you're going to be planning on running towards them anyway. So, yeah, not bad. All right, so big item finished for OQ. Last Whisper done, so he'll be able to maybe handle this Maokai a little bit better in the next team fight, especially since Shai is now building for MR instead after purchasing the Frozen Heart. Yep. Red Life barely at the end of that death sentence range and not going to get hit. Another minute and a half till the Dragon. and It seems like the Dragons have been coming faster today than, than usual. I don't know what it is, but it seems like every time I turn away and look back, there's a dragon fight. There's been a lot of action so far in this game. Yeah, there really has. In spite of very few turrets going down, we have had some really big team fights, and we're almost certainly going to have another one. Shai will try and push that out as far as he can before that happens. Uh, CJ has a bit of wiggle room, though. They could, in, they could trade this dragon for probably two turrets if they wanted to at this late stage of the game, and that may in fact be the better idea. Well, they don't have any turrets yet, so if you, you go into this part of the game without really any sort of map presence, it does get a little bit risky. Yeah, that's yeah. that's why I think it's not so much about the gold as it is, you have to start looking towards objectives in the future, right? I think you're right. And in the late game, it opens up barren opportunities as well if you have that top lane tower destroyed, as well as making subsequent dragons easier. Your opponents already have that first dragon that is so critical. Dragon number two doesn't really help a whole lot. That tower damage uh, doesn't make that big of a difference right now. So I say give that up if you can. Yeah. Try and take some of those turrets instead. We'll see if they want to. They might just decide they can win a team fight too. Yeah, they, we'll they, have that, they have that engage potential, but it could go wrong again if Mad Life gets caught out. Oh, Ambition nearly getting hit with the death sentence there. Duke trying to slow people as uh, Najin backs away for the moment. Pink Ward Wars in the brush. Like usual, Mad Life with the stun loaded up. He's got the flash, he's got the tibbers. Dragon already started for CJ. They're going to go for it here. And Najin trying to poke as much as they can. Yeah, look at this. Coco has to two. walk all the way around, though. He really can't flank. He's too immobile. Coco oh, gets grabbed. That's right. Kane going in. There's the box. Kane tries to get out. Oh, huge ultimate coming in from Osandra as well. But CJ not losing a ton of health just yet. Lucian manages to pick up a kill, but there's one for Coco now. Tank does go down. Watch doing the best he can, but OQ just not finding a good position on this fight. He's going to get caught. It's a 5v1. Duke still trying to do something again. He's going to have to flash away. And more of the same as far as the team fights go in this game. Wow, I'm really wow. surprised that they decided to ult Mad Life with the Lissandra ult instead of hitting yeah. Coco with that one. Coming in on that engagement, there was just no way for OQ to deal follow-up damage. They have to make sure that OQ is there. Imagine has spent so much of this game making sure that OQ was ahead, and he has not been able to do much in the last two team fights because he's been zoned out. Uh, people going over walls when he has no way to follow up on them. Yeah, they're just not giving him really opportunities, which is what you need to do if your AD carry is fed like that. But I, I think we're seeing that Tank isn't quite as strong in this Lissandra pick as he has been on some of the other ones. And well, Kane decided to go in on that too. I yeah. mean, they grabbed Coco right here. Now watch this coming in. Kane will flash out and look at this. Oh, he, they did get the old off on the Coco, excuse me. So they did get the right target right zone there. Is. But there's no real way to follow up on this. Watch gets blown out by the Lee Sin ultimate, so he can't follow up on this damage. Finally, OQ actually able to get some damage down, but he is easily focused by the crowd control from Maokai. I mean, you see the burst from OQ's Lucian right now, and, and you know what he could do in a team fight if he was able to get a good angle. It's, it's a little bit odd that he hasn't, but this game is still close. CJ? Well, it, it really wasn't OQ's fault right there. No, not they at just all. They should not have followed up over the wall onto the hook onto Coco. Yeah, they I think, oh, they're going to go in onto Coco. Coco. There's an easy pick, but can CJ turn it around? Mad Life in a lot of trouble. They're going to get ults onto him. Another kill comes in for Watch. Shy trying to back off Ambition. May be able to escape here. They're just going to dive it after they kill the turret. Ambition gets grabbed with that death sentence and dodge in with a very much needed team fight win there. And here's that part where you may have wished those turrets were down. This yeah. is a barren attempt right here. Waves are not in the favor of CJ Entis, so. Should he, be a pretty easy Baron. Yeah, definitely. OQ following, able to follow up in that one and easily 
taking control over that team by Coco with the missed position. Yeah, health total's good, and Najin not a lot to worry about from those Corky Rockets. And it looks like Space is just gonna have to watch Najin take that Baron. Oh, Coco. Just shouldn't have been walking there. No, no vision. No vision in the river. Yep. Easy, easy pick for Najin to turn this game back around, and that death from Coco turns into a Baron able to move right through the tower, taking it down as they walk past, and the follow-up hook from Kane. Kane's hooks have been good this game. Yeah, they certainly have. His decision to go in after them, that's Th what yes. maybe is lacking. The first Q has been good. <laughs> the decision to hit Q again has not always been on point. That's right, yeah. In fact, I've, I've found, and I think a lot of thrushes would agree, that generally you don't need that second Q most of the time if the first Q is good. I certainly agree in several of the team fights in this game. Yeah. But Space, looking at his item build right now, he has a bunch of kills, and his positioning in these team fights has been good relative to the rest of his teammates. But his item build is pretty low damage right now. Look at that. Going for the Alacrity enchantment after the QSS, he is just playing very scared right now. He's got multiple ways to kite you, trying to be faster with the Enchantment, trying to get that distance, open up a gap with the Blade of the Ruined King, but he's really not, he's really not gonna be doing much damage with this build, yeah. is the thing. Compare that to Oku's build already with that Bloodthirster. Well, Mad Life's Righteous Glory is finished now, which could be interpreted as a uh, critique on his career, but it actually just <laughs> means the item that he built in this game. Mad Life's been doing well so far I think far he's still got game. plenty of glory left. Yeah. I, that was just, it's okay. He can, Some he, would argue. He can find his glory in NA <laughs> when he goes there. Inevitably plays for a team there at some <laughs> <Yeah>. point. <laughs> Who knows? Well. Curse Mad Life confirmed on St. Fish's stream. Wow. That'd be interesting. We'd have to go back in time a bit for that one, though, at this point. A little bit of damage on this tier two, and uh, Najin really trying to put that Baron to work. Tank, though, whoa, what are you doing there? Flash Shivers from Mad Life comes in, and that's an easy kill on Lissandra. Watch, comes over the wall, Kane as well. They're going to try to make something out of this. A double kill, though, for Coco. Uh-oh, that was a bad idea. I feel like this game is just Najin, like, filing one by one I to know, their demise. Right? Yeah. I, I don't really get why they're following up. Duke is going to be able to split push and take down an inhibitor tower. Maybe he'll get out of this. He certainly is tanky enough to make a go of it. Good luck. But there's, great. A, there's a lot of percent HP damage between Mundo yeah. great and Lee Sin, face. but they're not actually going to try and finish him off right there. They just let him go. All right. Well, that's that point in the game where Mundo gets a little bit difficult to handle. It just gets too annoying. You know, after a while you're like, ah, I don't even want to bother. Oh, OQ. Oh. Getting zoned. Luckily, he's got a door to go into his base. I do agree, though. Tank on this Lissandra. He seems so comfortable playing at range, but he really doesn't seem to know his limits when he goes in. Yeah, his his choice on when to engage has been very, very poor. Like right here. Why would you follow that E? Where's your team, Tank? Well, I'll tell you. They're not anywhere near you. Great play by Mad Life, though. Legitimately yeah. to flash Tibbers for that one. That was oh. a smart decision. They're able to burn him down before he could zone you or use his ultimate. But I everybody else just piling in afterwards was a bit of a question mark on Najin's part. They just don't seem very coordinated in yeah. terms of their positioning this game. And they've been out of position multiple times. We saw Kane out of position in the river, walking through that uh, choke point when he kind of had no business to be there. This time, uh, Tank trying to threaten the flank, but coming over the wall. And when they saw the claw in, all of a sudden they know, oh, yeah, Tank oh, has nothing sweet. left. We're gonna flash on him and kill him. It, it, it does make it very easy. If he had walked over there, the, he may have had an easier time. Maybe, yeah. I mean, the rest of his team was just so far away as well, too. Even even with the speed that Kane and, and uh, Watch got in there, it, it was nowhere near enough. And, yeah. It's one of those times where, like, all right, well, either we let him die or we have to go in and try something. And they felt like they needed to try something, but it ended up being kind of like, well, I want to die, too. Meanwhile, Duke doing some damage to that inhibitor up in top. Space is there, though, and he's going to be able to... He has Red a, Duke out of there. He has a blade, so yeah. he's going to be able to do damage to Duke. He's pretty much only good for dealing with Duke. Oh, it does give Najin that dragon, though, so that would be a two to three now. Najin catching up a bit in that regard. Split push paying off. Yeah, Duke looks like he 
maybe going for a war mods. This final item just stacking up on that base HP. Would be a smart idea on Mundo. Yeah, OQ Ag just trying to buy a bit Ooh. of time with the culling there. QSS actually finished for OQ now too, so he's reached that six item status. He'll be quite happy about how that's going for him so far, and yeah. you know, at least he has a tool to survive against some of the crowd control from Maokai and what do you think Manny of, and Victor. What do you think about the Thorn Mail for Duke? I don't I don't know if that's the most helpful thing this game. I think it is, especially so? if he, yeah, I think it is. Uh, just because the, the Corky does have the Blade of the Ruin King. You want to be able okay. to deal with the auto attacks in some way. Yeah, there is that. And he already has both major MR items in Spirit Visage and Banshee's Veil. And, and Randuin's, I suppose. And Randuin's, and yeah. you get so much armor as well. So otherwise, it, it makes it so hard for AD carries to deal with this Mundo in this situation because you lose half your health trying to kill them, and that makes you yeah. pretty vulnerable. It will also maybe even force space to build a Bloodthirster, I could which see. lowers his damage even further compared to Lucian in this situation. I could see, too, if you went for Warmogs instead, then you'd still be vulnerable to the percent health damage. So, All right. I think the Warmogs is... It's a, such a good pickup on Mundo, though, because he gets percent HP back from his ultimate. So. I'd imagine that's what he's going to go for next. Yeah. Also right. just adds to that insane HP regen that you already have. Yeah. But you think the Thornmail is better before the Warmogs in this case? Yeah. Okay. Especially for any kind of split pushing situation that occurs. Oh. Yomu's calling. Oh, Ambition coming in deep on the watch there. Decides he wants to just fight. Watch is, uh, or Ambition rather, is pretty tanky right now, too. Well, and Najin. You know, Baron is up right now. Nobody really has vision nearby. CJ trying to keep that pressure on the mid lane. This could be a little bit crazy, though. Only one upgraded trinket on Najin so far. I think that's a bit of an error. A lot of these Korean teams really don't like upgrading their trinkets too early, but I think it's just such a good gold value right now. Yeah. Oracle's Lens is only 250, and that one pick can win you a game, especially when you have a Thresh. So maybe, maybe worthwhile for Watch to get that a bit earlier than now. That late game, just even those one kills with those long death timers can make all the difference. Oh, Ambition coming in, he's gonna try to get a kick, doesn't quite do it though. Tried for the ward hop, tried to pull the insect off, but didn't right have there a actually. His kick went on cooldown. Uh, I'm not sure, Duke popped his ultimate as well too. I think he thought he was gonna get kicked in, but. Well, he should have gotten kicked in. Not, oh, not exactly sure what, what went down right there. Yeah. Uh, it could have been the Veil coming back up, actually. Uh, I bet yeah. you that was it. I, I bet his Veil right. just came up. I think you're right. I'll have to see a replay there. But either way, Duke's ultimate down for a little bit. Najin just baiting that Baron, trying to get control over the pit there. Uh, nobody's hiding in that brush. Yep. I think Mundo needs a new uh, briefcase. Oh, is Tank going to come in? It looks like he is. There's the ult on to watch, actually. All right, Mad Life. Gets blown up immediately. Kane throws the box on. Doesn't really catch anybody with it. A lot of damage onto Spaceo via OQ. Duke really low. It looks like he may go down right here. Kane comes in with the death sentence. Duke flashes away. He's going to regen some health. OQ doing a lot of damage now. Double kill, though, for Kuro. And CJ is bringing this fight back around. Najin, have they been forced away enough? They've lost two people. Duke just so tanky, though, so threatening, and the damage from Oki was terrifying. But Coco, yeah, you really don't want to mess with that guy right now. Enough burst for ambition, not quite. He's wow, been tanky himself. You have to commend CJ though, because that fight. Oh, whoops! Shy comes in the back line, so CJ gonna try for another flank, but right after losing space, I don't know how this is gonna work. Coco throwing some damage in, but Shy just still so crazy right now into the back lines of Najin and Duke. Still trying to protect OQ. OQ needs to get out of there, man. Look at all those auto attacks coming in. I think it's time to. Uh, I think it's time to say goodbye for Najin. Ambition just recalling. He's like, I don't want to be in, a, in any part of this. Wow, third ultimate right now for Duke. He's got the, such know, a right? low cooldown. Huge minion wave about to hit this inhibitor. Oh. Great wave control from Najin, that delaying that fight. Coco able to take out those casters immediately, though. One of the longest team fights I think I've ever seen there. Well, CJ did a great job. Basically, they timed that team fight around Duke's ultimate. They would have lost, I think, had Duke had his ultimate up initially. He did have to back off with the help of his flash. 
They're going for Baron number oh, there's two a ward right there. now. That, uh, yeah, but they can do it really fast. Should be able to. So CJ just concentrating on defending that top inhibitor, and uh, Najin will pick up their second Baron of the game. Well, you notice right there, the big difference was that Shy picked up the Thornmail, actually, which a lot, which meant that OQ actually couldn't finish out that team fight. So they get onto Mad Life right at the beginning. Mad Life does get hooked there. Wow. wow. Great play from Kane again. So can't do much over the course of that team fight. Now, Duke, however, was very low, didn't have his ultimate up, has to flash out and get his ult back on again before he can re-engage. If he had his ult up at the beginning of that fight, this would have looked much different. They would have been able to chase people down, but as we can see, Shy will recall right there and then enter the fray once again with the help of Teleport. OQ does take a death ray, starts to heal up off the minion wave, however. Goes on to Ambition, Ambition chilling smites OQ. What happens with space right here? I think he just gets dash. Okay, flash, oh, crit. Yeah. You got crit right there. Great play from OQ. Do it. And then Shy comes in from the flank, but the Thorn Veil means that even though OQ has a Bloodthirster, he can't lifesteal enough to offset the magic damage combined with Twisted Advance. That's uh, uh, three dragons now for uh, Najin as well, too. They were able to tie it up there. Watch was able to even go in and grab the blue buff from CJ. So right now, Najin just taking complete control of the map for the moment. But here we go. They pop the uh, active on the item. Kane goes really deep, gets a little bit of damage onto him. Watch getting blown up as well. Good positioning so far for CJ. Can OQ do enough here? Tank ults himself. He's going to get taken down right after the Zonia's ends. OQ already very low on health. There's a kill for Tank, though. He managed to get Mad Life right at the end. Comes back. Can he do anything with it, though? Not quite as Kuro picks up another one. OQ got out of the fight. He took a lot of damage early on. Wasn't able to participate long term. This is, this is a bit of a crazy game. Both teams very, very strong in the team fight. I don't know why Tank has a GA in this situation. Yeah. I, he, I was surprised to see that. He used his E right before he died on his GA too, so he wasn't going to have it off cooldown by the time he revived. I think that was a really questionable decision from him. And he should sell the GA right now and buy something else. There's no reason to keep it while the, the passive is down. Oh, definitely. So just get rid of it while you can. Watch has got that Mav Malmordius right now I... as well, trying to survive against the double AP. But Coco's been doing work on Victor. What are you Staying back and uh, making it, making it, uh, Work out of the back line, really. Now the, ooh, that's pretty huge. The Crucible's done on Mad Life. Mm. That's going to be very helpful because he, he's continuing to get ulted before he can get his spells down. Now he's not going to have to worry about that anymore. What do you think about uh, possibly grabbing a late Morello Namacon for tank rather than that, that uh, GA at the moment? Yeah, maybe. Like you could use it against Shy. Yeah. Use it against Ambition, maybe. Yeah, Shy, of course, does have that healing on his passive, so it could help him. These very chaotic team fights where nearly all of Maokai's auto attacks allow him to get some of that healing back. Right. A lot of choices you could make right there, but I don't think that GA is a good one. I, I really don't think that keeping GA right now is a good choice. I don't think if we've seen a uh, Lissandra build that ever. Yeah. Not that I can remember. It's a weird one. It is a bit weird. Six deaths, so he's probably feeling a little bit vulnerable this game. What we've seen, though, is just, you know, Tank not looking quite as comfortable on this big, heavy engage champ. Yeah, I, I know why they want to take down Mad Life, but Mad Life now has the tools in order to get himself out of that situation. So you really have to start looking into how you're going to deal with Coco right now. Coco does have that elixir of sorcery, so stacking up quite a ton yeah. of AP. It's too bad that Coco and Kuro have names that are so close to each other. Interesting, look at this. I mean. He's got the Fuhrer enchantment, so he wants to be autoing, showing how close he wants to get in some of these team fights uh, to use with his Q. With those two combined, he's going to be moving really fast. Mm. The Q and the uh, the boot enchant, just not something we normally see on Victor, but does make him even more elusive as he tries to get pinned down by Mundo, because he knows Mundo is going to be walking up to him, so there's not going to be a question that he's going to be autoing Mundo the entire time. So I actually like that pickup, actually. It plays really nicely against the Mundo. That's interesting. Mundo picked up an elixir, too, it looks like. I'm trying to see what icon it is. Our, our screens are kind of small. Uh, sorcery, looks like. He's got some extra AP. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Huh. 
does help with the, the AoE damage. Yeah, a little bit more AoE in the team fights. You're not going to get a Sunfire Cape. A bit weird, though. A lot of times you want that Elixir of Iron yeah. for the for the additional slow resistance and everything like that. I mean, he is already pretty tanky, but, but he is right. a tenacity. The, uh, the he, movement he has stuff Merc is Tread, so it's not that too. Yeah. But well, there is an Iron Elixir for Shy, but that just makes the gold bigger. I don't think that's what you want. <laughs> He's the worst goalie of all time. Just right. makes the gold bigger. Yeah, you want it to get smaller. Actually, anything that makes you smaller, Shy, that's what you want. Uh, CJ gonna looking for a flank right here. There oh, you go. they're gonna kick Kane right into the turret here, right into a timber oh. stun actually. But OQ actually gets out here. Can they take down Shy now? He's so tanky. Ambition coming in the back. Duke pops that ultimate. OQ throws the culling in. Shy getting a bit low, but it just kind of oh plays my. it down. That was huge. Wow, a nice W from Coco and CJ all over this team fight now. There's a kill for space. And Coco. I think Coco. Using that upgraded W to great yeah. effect right there, just hauling everybody in on Najin. Yeah, why not get a little bit of uh, Orion ultimate action going with that <laughs> victor, I suppose. Really nice play from CJ. Yeah. Great engage on the flank. Najin thought they maybe had out rotated their opponents, but Ambition comes in, gets the kick straight into the gravity field from Victor and the Annie stun. So Kane has a chance to do absolutely nothing right there. Can't even ult. Yep, and that's going to be at least an inhibitor for CJ, if not more. Big death timers for Watch and Kane no, I think and you, Tank. I think you can end it right here. Uh, I think you safely back off here if you can. I don't know if CJ wants to do that, Duke. Trying his best to stop it. CJ's going for it. There goes one Nexus turret. Oh boy, this is dangerous. Duke coming in again. GA popped. And CJ just opportunities to do more damage to those Nexus turrets. Oh, I don't know, man. Space gets that kill. They're going to have to back off now, but does this maybe open up a counter yeah, fifth is, dragon, a counter baron, or this a counter is, fourth rather dragon? This is why you didn't want to do that right there. Yeah. The safer call, 100% for CJ, was just to back out and start setting up to get both the baron and the dragon. With that dragon threat of a number five, you can then force fights that you want around the dragon pit. I think it's much better strategically, and they may give up a counter baron right here. B, watch onto Ambition right now. Ambition doesn't have time to get that Rift Scuttler. There's a Chilling Smite. Just to give him a little bit more parting damage. Looks like they're not going to give up a counter baron. Everybody accounted for at the pit. But and just Duke time. still with 40 seconds. So big wave here in the bottom side. See if somebody goes down to clean that one out or not. But CJ. CJ's team fighting. The later stages of, the, the later stages of this game has been extremely good. Yes, it has been. This and is kind of classic CJ here. Is especially Ambition. You have to give Ambition a lot of credit for this game because he has found some really good kicks, some really good engages. Yeah. All right, first Baron for CJ this game. Looks like it's going to be Dragon number four now for Najin. Can they get it before CJ rolls in? I don't know. It's going to be very close. I think yeah, they're barely going to get it. Yep, okay. there's the smite, and they'll get out just in time. Yeah, level 18 jungler, so 1,000 damage smite. Yeah. Does make securing those objectives. Helps out. Pretty simple. That's four dragons to three now in favor of Najin. So they do have that certain amount of pressure against CJ Entis, but right now they've got to deal with a, a very strong Maokai, a very strong Baron powered CJ. It's not going to be easy. Yeah. It's going to be really damn hard. Well, Duke holding on to the GA as well, even though the passive is down. Passive back up on the GA for tank at the moment. But yeah. Lissandra just. Sandra doesn't do a whole lot of damage in the late game, except for onto Coco, but Coco will be able to, he hopes at least, deal with this by using that Zonia's Hourglass. Yeah, now multiple GAs. What is this, season Season three? League of War Mogs and GAs? Uh, season two was disgusting uh, in terms of GAs as well. Yeah, too. Well, CJ with the Siege. Fine. There we go. Another minion wave. This will help out a little bit. Loki saw his ult, though, so he yep. can burn that anytime and clear out the wave. Just threatening the engage right there, forcing CJ back so he can clear out some of these melee minions, but not yeah. committing to the Lissandra E. Ooh, a lot of damage onto Najin right now. Ambition just tangling with Watch inside the base. That turret nearly down. Give it up. Yep, I think they do. It's going to be possibly another inhibitor. 
There's just not a whole lot that Najin can do against the CJ team. Huge not mini a wave hard one anyway. actually up in top. So CJ is going to have to defend their own naked inhibitor right now. Well, I think they're pretty happy to go back at this point. Two down in their favor. Oh. <laughs> yeah, caster minions. Well, CJ is going to run out of their Baron buff right now, and we will see the inhibitors come back up by the time the next dragon comes around, and that's gonna be the one that Najin really needs to pick up. CJ scrambles to the defense of their inhibitor. It takes virtually no damage, despite there being a tremendously large minion wave. Elixir of Iron, that is a giant Lee Sin. Yep. Wouldn't want to get a tiger uppercut from Lee Sin now. Muay Thai Lee Sin. Tiger uppercut. Man, I swear, like out of the Street Fighter characters that I detest, Sagat is definitely number one. Why? I can't stand that fireball spam. <laughs> it's coming high, now it's going low, now it's going high. <laughs> oh. I was always a Zanky player though, so that, that explains a lot. <laughs> it does explain a lot. You just like to get a close and grab people, don't you? He didn't exactly have the tools in the original Street Fighter 2 to get in there, but a little bit better now. Just flying around. Arms akimbo, helicoptering your way to victory. Well, arms akimbo is where they're bent. He just had his arms outstretched. <laughs> gotta, gotta know your differences in arm positions, Monty. <laughs> Thanks for the help. If you're gonna final atomic buster somebody. And, oh, Q lands onto a mission. He's gonna go in and kick Tank over the wall. Uh-oh, Tank in a little bit of trouble here. GA popped. Meanwhile, Space getting a lot of damage from the outside. Coco throwing the Death Lady to Sue. Uh, Tank and ult himself, not really catching anybody with that. He manages to get back into the base, and Zony is actually the turret already Shy down, dies. though. Shy does die. Meanwhile, Duke, <coughs> excuse me, onto Space. In the back lines, this fight may kill me, too. And Space getting zoned out. Is there anything that Najin can do? Not quite. It looks like finally CJ turning this one around. They're going to push it back, and Kane will go down for the ace. Double kill for Coco at the end of it all. CJ's fans, they're in love with the Coco, and it looks like... CJ is too. There goes the final Nexus turret, and that is going to be it. So at the end of the day, all it took was 104,000 gold for CJ Entis, and they take <laughs> game one, GG. Really just a great display of team fighting from oh, CJ yeah. in that game. That and is Najin overreaching on some of those engages. Watch and Tank not really very cognizant of the positioning of the rest of their team. Kane as well following a bit too many hooks to his demise. And in the end, CJ coming out with, uh, I mean, Coco on Victor was so good. Yeah, we thought that Kuro was going to be the only one. In fact, I think I probably called him Kuro like a million times. Cause <laughs> so previously, that was the only good Victor. But now we've got another name to add to that list, and it's Coco. A victory for CJ Antis. And, you know, when you see CJ, 